this end of the part is now complete. Okay, so we can take it out. Undo the chuck key. Chuck with the chuck key. Now this end of the part's nicely finished. Now one thing you want to be aware of is if the countersink is not brand new and real sharp, it'll leave a small little secondary burr. I can feel a little ridge with my fingernail. I'll go over to the Scotch-Brite wheel and just take it right up against the diameter of the Scotch-Brite wheel like this. Just gently polish that little burr off. Okay. okay, now is it time you can check the length. The part should be about 2.6 inches long when you start. Okay. I'm still about 2.6 inches long. Actually about 2.625. Okay. So what I'll do, this is all rough cut. I'll put it back in the chuck. And face this side. Okay, so we'll turn the motor back on. Spindle, come in. One thing I didn't mention on the first side, you want to take the minimum you can take off to clean it up. Okay? Don't give away a lot of your extra material on the first side. Okay, I didn't even clean it up all the way, so I'll take a little bit more. Okay, now the end of the part is nice and square and fully faced. So now what I want to do is I want to get a measurement because now I'll get an accurate measurement of the length. So we'll take it out. Now, stay away from this relieved part of the jaws and the caliper. Put it in the lower part here. Push with your thumb and twist the part. You want to make sure the caliper is completely across the shortest distance of the part. Then read the caliper. Okay? I've got 2.5 and I'm between the first and the second mark after the 2.5. So the, each one of the small marks on the caliper is 0 .025 inches. So we're at 2.5 25 plus something. Then you look at the moving jaw and you see which one of the lines on the moving jaw, the movable jaw, lines up best with the lines above it. And it looks to me like about the 15 line. So we have 2.5 plus 0 0.025, so that's 2.525 plus 15.015, so we have 2.540. Our drawing tells us that the maximum is 2.510, the minimum is 2.500. If I take 0 .03 off, we'll be right at the maximum. I'd like to be right in between the maximum and the minimum. So we'll put this back in the chuck. Now, if you look at the lathe, okay, we've got a 1,000th graduated dial on the cross slide, which is perpendicular to our part length. We've got a 1,000th graduation dial on the compound slide, which is sitting at some angle. Okay, it actually is about 30 degrees. It's 29 and a half degrees. Well, if you do a little trig here, the sine of 30 is 0.5, and the sine runs this way. So normally, when you turn the cross slide dial, just like the cr sorry, when you turn the compound dial, just like the cross slide dial it moves half of what you turn because they read diameter, not radius. So if I turn the compound ten thousandths, it actually moved five. But times the sine of one half tells you how far it moves toward the part. So it actually moved two and a half thousandths. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the play out of this and zero it. Then I'm going to come in I'm going to bring the tool over. Actually, I didn't need to zero it yet. But I'm going to come over and very carefully just touch the part. I'm moving the compound until I see dust. Now what I'll do is I'll back the tool straight out with the cross slide. I'm not going to change its position along the length of this part. I'm just going to back the tool straight up. So it's still in the same Z direction that it was, same Z position. Now I'm going to zero the dial. You loosen this little screw, and you can independently rotate 
the calibration wheel without touching the position of the hand wheel. I'll put it right on zero. Okay, now, we said if we took off 30 thousandths of an inch, we would be at the high limit on the part. Okay, so if I turn this 120 thousandths, it'll actually move toward the part 30. So there's 120. Okay, that's actually 30 thousandths in the Z direction. Now we'll make a cut. And now I'm going to take it out and measure it again. Another thing I didn't mention, don't ever do this. Never leave the chuck key in the chuck. If you accidentally or someone accidentally turns it on with the chuck key in the chuck, the chuck key flies. Okay. Check our length again. Okay, now we're at, we can see the zero line on the moving jaw is just to the right of the 2.5 line. So it's 2.5 plus something, but it's not quite to the next line, so it's less than 0 0.025 past 2.5. So we'll look at the lines on the moving jaw again, and it looks like we're right on the money. We're right at about the 10 line. So we have 2.500 zero zero plus 0 0.010, 2.510. We're right at the high limit. So now I'll we'll put the part I don't want to leave it there. I want to go a little bit under. I don't want to be at the high limit. Tighten it back up. Repeat the process. Okay. We'll come in and start the spindle. And very carefully, we just want to touch the end of the part. We don't want to cut it. We just want to touch it. So we're going to just make dust. All right, I'm touching. Now I'll zero the dial again on the compound. Okay. I'm going to back up with the cross light, not changing the position of it along the part length. Okay. So we want to take off 5,000. So if I turn this 20, it moves along the length of it, half of that, and then along the, code, the sign of 30, half of that. So it would be 5,000. So now we'll make another cut. Pretty small amount of material. Now I'm pretty confident that that's correct. So I'm going to go ahead and deburr the OD of this in, which I haven't done yet. Small little radius, and then the ID of the hole. Part out. Check the length one more time. Looks like it's about 2.504, right almost in the middle. So this part is now finished. You do not put your lab number on it, there's no place to stamp it. The only thing I'll do is I'll go to the Scotch-Brite wheel and get rid of that little secondary ridge left by the countersink and then this part will be all done.